Now, Jimmy, we're here with just one element of the JBL VTX V20 series line array. Uh, now, just one element in our studio, not a great listening test. Oh, I like how it sounds. <laughs> yeah, okay. And how do we know how we like how it sounds? Oh, because we did this. Okay, so just to prove the point that we did in fact come and listen to the VTX in an environment outside of the CXTV studio, I'm here at the big top at Luna Park, Sydney. Behind me is six per side elements of VTX20 and three S25 subs running in a flown cardioid configuration. So that's what we listened to. Here's what we thought. I think I, I was really quite pleasantly surprised by this. Now, they have really changed quite a lot about particularly the way the high end functions in JBL. So uh, some of you out there might be familiar with what's known as the, the JBL Bark, something personally I've never been a particularly good fan of. Um, it's gone. Uh, the high end of this particular series is actually quite different from anything I've heard from JBL before in a very positive way. It, it's a lot flatter, it's a lot more even. Imaging was incredible, particularly in some of the recordings we were listening to last night. So I think they're yeah, very positive it was, changes. Actually, yeah, particularly when they played some, uh, particularly some Broadway musicals. I felt like I was actually looking at the stage mm. and I can identify performers. So that's really quite different from what I've come to expect from JBL. How about you, Jimmy? Yeah, look, um, for me, I think they've got everything about this from 100 hertz upwards right i'm still mm. not sold on the flown sub configuration but mm. i don't think i'd be the only person out there who prefers a ground coupled yeah that's system. a completely different ball game um yeah, yeah look I, I think you know and w just without that you struggle to get the real low end extension mm. Mm. but look certainly i think uh, as far as the v20 goes uh, I, I agree i think what they've done they've got the d2 driver in here which is the dual voice call dual diaphragm yeah, now what is that all about? They've actually brought in some engineering experience from outside the company, shall we say. Yeah. It's really look, quite a radical concept. Essentially what they've done is they've punched a hole through the diaphragm. It's kind of like Sounds a donut. Sounds weird. Yeah, it's like a donut. But mm. it's also, when, when you do that, you take a whole chunk of mass out, and thus you mm. reduce the inertia of the diaphragm, which mm. means you can move it faster, which means you get better high frequency extension with reduced breakup modes. Yeah, I mean, that's, so, that's what I was hearing. Better high end. Yeah, it was a completely different, better high end. I mean, if you've ever been skeptical about JBL, you need to get in front of this and hear it. Yeah, and look, um, we, we were listening to it in, in a, a pretty pretty solid configuration. You can run this in uh, two-way passive mode. Mm. Uh, we were listening to it in full active, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, the whole system was being driven off Crown VRAX, which mm -hmm. is what it's designed for. You can get a, a triple two-channel amp VRAC or a triple four channel amp VRAC and the idea is that off one of those four channel amps you can hang up to three of the V20s mm -hmm. so it gives you nine elements per VRAC. Um, in full active mode you've got one amp channel for one 10, one amp channel for the other 10, one amp channel for the mid and one amp channel for the D2 mm -hmm. high frequency driver. Mm. Now the driver's not the only thing they've uh, sort of rejigged and thought about quite a lot. The rigging options uh, are really quite different from the old yeah, Vertec. Yeah, look, if you're familiar with Vertec, you'll know there was one way to put it together. Um, this has obviously uh, still maintained the ability to, to build it you know, in the train sort of format and, and rigidly lock all mm. the angles uh, between boxes together and then just pick it up. Uh, but what you can also do now with this, uh, V20 has the option for compression rigging. So mm. essentially you Push the little, uh, you push the little lever out, you dial up whatever angles you want between the boxes, you push the red pin in, it locks the angles, um, your pins go in the side to lock your boxes together, and then uh, you pick it up mm -hmm. by the front end, and then you pick it up at the back end and either compress it yep. to the original pick point, or mm -hmm. you can compress it off a second motor, mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you can tilt the whole array back and forth, and you've yeah. even got a little slot here where you can put the laser in, yep. figure out, and that's exactly where you where your aim is going. It means on the way out, you can actually drop it flat, drop it onto its dollies, take it off as as you go, and just wheel it out. I think it's safe to say this one goes up and down faster than Vertec. Yeah, I think it does. So look, overall, I'd say get in front of it, give it a listen. It's really quite radically different from what JBL have done before, and I think in a good way. Yeah, it's definitely not what you expect, and it's definitely a step forward. Mm.